Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey guys, this is Steve Roy, host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you for listening. Uh, So before I introduce today's guest, I just want to take a quick moment to invite all you dads who are listening right now. If you're ready to start uh, taking action on reclaiming your health and fitness and becoming a a better father, a better man, to join our free online community, uh, the best way to do that right now is to apply to our free private Facebook group, which can be found at fitdadnation.com forward slash community. Uh, So my guest today is someone who shares uh, the same passion for helping dads get fit and healthy as I do. His name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. So he's a a men's health expert, the owner of the Fit Father Project, and he uh, holds uh, dual degrees in nutrition and neuroscience from the University of Pennsylvania and a doctorate uh, in naturopathic medicine. He's also a speaker, entrepreneur, former bodybuilding champion, and I've known him for a few years now, and he's a a genuinely good guy and definitely knows his shit when it comes to the world of fitness. So welcome, my friend. I appreciate your time this morning. I am appreciative to be here, Steve. Yeah, man. Oh, and congrats on your recent marriage, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. So I love your story. I, you know, I uh, I read your stuff, and you know, you put out just so much great content, and it's just a constant stream of high quality stuff. And I, I, you know, before we jump into all the stuff I want to talk about, um, maybe just tell us a little bit about your story, how the Fit Father Project came to be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. I, I guess I kind of got interested in men's fitness in particular by accident. And what I mean by that is, is growing up, I watched my own dad lose his health, you know, work himself to the bone, get sick, and he passed away at 42 years young. Um, I was nine at the time. My little brother was six. And to say it rocked our family's world would be an understatement. You know, we were absolutely devastated after dad passed. At the same time, though, it taught me some lessons at a very young age. And the first one is that health is the foundation of everything we love. I watched my dad trade all of that, and I saw what happened, that he didn't have the time and the years and the energy to spend with me, my mom, my little brother, to see us grow up. And I, it was a lightning bolt wake-up call at a young age. And I'm like, that will not happen to me. And insofar as I'm capable, I will make sure that doesn't happen to other guys in time. So I started doing... Um, I didn't know much at the time, but push-ups, sit-ups, started eating my broccoli because I wanted to, and I started to heal um, through dad's passing. And what I realized, too, at a young age with fitness is it's one of those things that if we can find a way to control the variables, our sleep, our movement, the nutrition we put in our bodies, we can get a tangible output. We can change our body. We can change our energy levels. We can feel better. And through that, I gained a sense of control. Um, when my life felt like it was out of control, I gained control. And a passion sparked that um, I was really steamrolled over the last 20 years into a lot of the experiences that were in the bio, like spending an ungodly amount of time in school um, and you know, competing on bodybuilding stages and culminating with uh, a website that I started called the Fit Father Project, where uh, we do exactly what you guys do here at Fit Dad Nation. You know, we help busy guys get their health back and because the health ends up being the foundation of how you reinvent yourself for the back half of life, how you feel with your energy and your confidence and your mojo. Um, and especially for so many guys who are frustrated because they've tried diets, they've tried workouts that haven't worked for them, and you know they're stuck on this yo-yo hamster wheel. Just like you, Steve, like we help guys get off that wheel. And so this stuff is incredibly personal to me. I'm not a dad yet. I will be soon. My wife is working on changing that as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. That being said, I just have such an intimate connection with seeing um, what my dad went through, you know, he he was doing what most guys think, and that is to to work hard, um, to trade his time and his health for wealth to provide for us. But in a way, a lot of us are realizing, looking at both ourselves and our parents, that that is a backwards formula, and things need to change. So we are here to change that. Yeah, for sure. Such a powerful story. And one of the things I I like about what you're doing is, you know, you've not only invested a lot of time into education, but bettering yourself on the marketing side of things where, you know, we all know that, you know, no matter how much and how great your content is, if it doesn't reach anybody, you're not helping anybody. So you've really expanded on both sides. So you're able to scale what you know and what you've learned 
But more importantly, you're actually trying to help people because we're, we're in a business, obviously, that is just right for the picking for savvy marketers, fake Instagram coaches, people selling garbage. And it's, I mean, it's, it really, really disturbs me. And, as, you know, there's not much I can do about it. But it's something that personally affects me a lot, seeing people just throwing away time and, you know, years and thousands of dollars, you know, chasing fads and, and people that really can't help them. And so when I see your stuff, you know, anybody that watches your content and listens to you, you know, you have a sincere interest in helping these men. And I mean, like just the sheer amount of content that you have developed to help guys is far beyond what you normally see. So, you know, I definitely uh, can appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And I think it's a byproduct of if you really do care, that means you're going to spend the eight years in the pocket before no one cares about you know your little website is shooting all the videos and writing all the articles and staying in the space and that's something that you and I definitely share um, is you know we're still here there's there are so many flash in the pan kind of scams on Instagram and I the good news is I think people are getting more savvy you know especially the nice thing is you know the guys that we help are are busy guys that don't have time for these you know extreme Instagram fad you know shirt off ad programs that mm -hmm. are promising six packs overnight like we're we're here for like how do like busy guys implement like practical eating and exercise strategies that don't take a lot of time that work for their bodies um, and that they can actually sustain like that's the game I'm in um, and I you know for guys who are searching that you know it's, it's very obvious to see what the real stuff is from the fake stuff. Yeah, for sure. So let's jump into like uh, just the big question here. So, you know, dads, we all want, you know, most of us want the same things, right? We want higher quality of life, more energy. We want to be better role models. We want to live longer. We want to feel more confident. We want to be more attractive to our significant others. We want to have better sex. You know, we want to look in the mirror and actually like what we see, right? And so we have all the same excuses coming up over and over. And I just have to wonder, you know, and have to get your thoughts on this is, we have more than enough information, resources, everything at our fingertips, yet we're not doing these things, right? You see it every day, right? We're getting fatter, right? Dads are not getting fitter, we're getting worse, yet we have everything we need, but we're still coming up with, I'm not motivated, I don't have any energy, right? I don't know how to eat healthy. I don't know how to stay away from alcohol and soda. Like, I don't have enough time, right? Those are the big things that, that you know, encompass what we do. And so, I mean, in your opinion, What's like, what's the, the solution to this, you know, and, and I see, you know, you've taken the approach of let's just start creating resource after resource after resource. But do you ever feel like, you know, what we're up against is just so massive, you know, because there's so many things working against us out there, you know, and we're these small little guys here trying to, you know, make a dent in such a massive, massive, you know, issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple things there that I definitely want to comment on is the first one, I, I think, Resources that you do find online, whether they're blogs or articles from us or other people, um, are are honey. They're merely attractants. They're merely the things that the goal of those little content pieces is just to get a little light bulb to go off in someone's head to be like, wow, this is a little different and maybe this is possible for me. I, I think the goal of, of content should be to inspire some hope and maybe have people have a couple perspective switches. But what really drives transformation is getting guys into a comprehensive system where they are no longer um, the ones trying to figure this out. They're basically following the plan. And I think that is so important. And the plan cannot be um, an extreme plan. It needs to be a comprehensive plan that addresses all the domains that guys struggle with. So it has to address the motivation and helping people discover what their deep reasons are for being healthy. Because let's be honest, like you said, we all know that the salmon is probably a better option than the burger mm -hmm. on the dinner menu. It's a question of how do we get ourselves to order the salmon? And how do we get ourselves to order that on a consistent basis? It's a behaviors thing, which comes down to identity, comes down to motivations, and rewiring some of our, our thought patterns and even some of our neurochemistry from the things we put in our bodies to help us sustain this stuff. And we have to have simple systems around nutrition and exercise. And I, I think the problem that guys fall into when, it, when we're inundated with information is it's easy for us to be in the middle of this, cherry picking this little tidbit and that little tidbit, trying to piece it together ourselves, which is inherently stressful 
Um, and in relation to all the other busyness we have going on in life, we have work responsibilities, family stuff, and we're not feeling good. It's like it's, it's building on a house of cards. It's just never going to work out long term. So what we found as a recipe is we've developed like a very uh, simple system that guys can more or less follow. You follow this for 30 days. You basically follow it to the book and you will see results. And when you start to see results in 30 days, it reinforces your motivation. And then we throw guys, much like you do, in community. So we're all in this together because we get help, We get unhealthy most of the time in isolation. We get unhealthy after kind of sleepwalking through 10, 15, 20 years of just being busy and stressed and not taking care of ourselves. So we need to radically shift things up um, to, to create transformation. It's, it's not this uh, gradual cherry pick a bit of information here because you're right. Information is not the problem. It's, it's, it's lack of transformation, lack of follow through. So that obviously needs the motivation, but it also needs to have guys be able to put themselves in the system where they can just follow along. Less thinking in the beginning is better execution because the execution on these simple habits as you know if you get a guy to meal prep to start eating basically unprocessed foods and doing three 30-minute workouts per week and going to bed at a regimented time yeah he's gonna lose 5 10 15 pounds in that first month and then he's gonna be like oh shit maybe mm -hmm. this this can work for me and then there's intrinsic motivation the motivation that comes internally starts to kick in and then the flywheel starts spinning on its own and if you keep that guy going for another two months now you have something that's 90 days. The momentum is even stronger. The ability to be derailed is even weaker. Um, and that's, that's how guys can propel through the shit, through that mud, that inertia that sticks so many guys down. Um, but I think it requires the addressing the motivation piece, getting those simple systems with eating and exercise and getting guys in community where they can vent because this stuff doesn't always go right and you do slip up. Um, and if you're trying to do this on your own uh, and you've been doing it on your own, maybe it's time to change things up. Mm -hmm. That's why I love building programs like you and I have. Yeah, I mean, you said a lot of stuff in there, some three big points too. But like you said, and this is a really important point is, you know, because there's so much information at our fingertips, that's exactly what most of us do is we, you know, like you said, cherry pick. I'm going to follow, you know, Jeff Cavalier's Athlean X chess program, and then I'm going to take something from this guy, and then I'm going to follow this guy, right? Um, and then, you know, I honestly believe, and I'm 100% behind what you just said, is you've got to have all the parts together um, because, you know, guys aren't going to put them all together. They're not going to go out and separately find the accountability and then a, a, a like-minded tribe and, and uh, you know, the all, the all the parts that are part of this, you know, making this a permanent part of their lifestyle, not just... I'm going to do this workout for, you know, four weeks, get a bigger chest, add 20 pounds to my bench. Like, well, that's, you know, that's all well and good. And, but, you know, if your goal is to, you know, become a, you know, a, a much fitter dad for the long term and do all those things that you know, we just talked about, you, you know, you may need to look at a, a bigger picture. So, yeah, it's, it's absolutely so important to have all of that going together. I agree 100% with that. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, it's not like the components, especially, and I want to really talk about the, uh, the, the mission and mindset part of this, because this is something that if you pick up any diet book or the vast majority of exercise programs, they don't address this, but it really is as simple as going through, like what we have our guys do, it's like a mission statement, journaling exercise before they even start the diet or the workout program. They go through like a probably a 30 minute journal exercise where they basically write down their values and they see how their current decisions with their eating and their exercise are affecting every single area of their lives. How is your nutrition affecting your ability to show up um, and be focused at work to be a good parent? How is it affecting you financially? How is How are your health decisions affecting you spiritually with your confidence? Because we often think that the way we eat and the way we exercise and how we take care of our bodies is separate from the rest of our lives. We, we, we silo our health into a separate domain. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have all these other things on one side and health is on the other. When that is a wrong way to think about these things. The, what we're doing in these, these fundamental processes with how we take care of our bodies are overlapping with everything else. They're the foundation. So when we get our health right, everything else starts to work better. And often it takes guys just the simple act of writing things down, seeing how their decisions are not actually uh, relating to their true core values that drive them. And then it becomes uh, an identity level shift. You don't become the guy who's following the diet. You become the guy that eats healthy because it aligns with your values of being a strong, productive, confident man. Because when you do the converse of that thing, everything starts to work worse. 
And so that's what that's what helps you battle the food cravings, which inevitably happen. I mean, Steve, how long have you been doing this stuff? Decades. I imagine you still get food cravings at night sometimes, right? <laughs> like oh, yeah. oh, those yeah. don't go away. But you definitely have very strong reasons for doing what you do. Um, and more guys need to discover that. And it's definitely beyond the physical. Big chest, big bench are great. You can have that. Um, but tying this stuff to the deeper motivations that you have in life and making that very explicit and also realizing in future casting what that pain will be like if you don't get this shit handled, what's life going to be like in 20 years? You're going to be like your parents, heart disease, multiple medications, losing your mind. You know, we see this stuff happening and, and we don't think the, the mind has a bias to not think that we're heading down this path, that things might be different, but they won't necessarily be unless we change our behaviors. So we get very serious about this, this motivation mindset piece. And then when you have a group of guys who have all gone through that same kind of motivation stuff and they write their mission statements, they share it publicly, and then you have a simple nutrition plan to follow. And if it doesn't go well, you can post in. If it goes well, you can post into the groups. Like that's where the real power is. And that's where guys start to transform inside those communities. Yeah, for sure. And just, just a couple of weeks ago, I shared um, uh, my story of my parents uh, on one of my episodes where I watched my mother, she died at 70, you know, that's, which is not old. And she, she was just someone that, that was, she never took care of her health ever. And my father on the flip side, they were divorced when I was six. So he went one way, she went the other. And he's 74. His numbers are better than mine. Like he's in the gym three to four hours a day, stretching and swimming. And so it's just like, you see the total split, like one person was 100% committed to their health and being, you know, living long and one wasn't and you see what happens and, and yeah. that terrifies me. Um, the thought of that, like, and we can control that. You know, it scares me. How many guys have you seen in their 40s, even early 40s that are on death's door? Like basically their numbers are horrible. They're, they're you know, 45% body fat. Like everything is just falling apart. They don't move well. They have no strength. Like just everything is, and that's early 40s, right? What happens Tons when they're 60, yeah. right? If they don't do anything, they're going to be, you know, hobbling around, hunched over. They're not going to be able to do anything. Um, and, you know, we see that so often. And that's obviously something I don't want to have happen to myself. But, you know, it's our job to, to help guys, you know. And like you said, it all ties back to, you know, getting involved in something that's bigger than, you know, a YouTube video. And, you know, so on that note, I mean, in your experience, do you think a lot of dads or a lot of men need like an aha wake up moment um, to get started? Because you know, ever you know, we're all stuck in the grind of life, right? Kids and job and stress and all these things, right? And unless something catastrophic happens, or you know, your parent dies, or something else happens that triggers, you know, the catalyst becomes the catalyst. What's what's you know going to separate? Oh, I found you know Anthony's program. I found Steve's program you know, I think I'm going to change my life today. Like that, you know, why would that happen unless something triggers that to say, holy shit, my buddy just died and he was only 50. You know, that that's something that will get you started. And it happened for you with your father, happened with me with my divorce. But do you see that a lot? Uh, I mean, guys needing a, you know, a, a, literally a catalyst to take that massive action to get started? I do see that a lot. Absolutely. You know, it, it comes in the form of doctor's visits, comes in the form of brothers having heart attacks, um, you know, divorces, relationship stuff that shake us up because the truth is, is that um, we like to stay in the same place and the pain to change is often perceived as greater than the pain of staying exactly where we're at. And so I think it's very individual for every single guy. Um, and I hope that most guys don't need to wait until they have a catastrophic wake up to, to get serious about this stuff. And this is why I think you can do some of this proactive mission statement work. And, and, and I guess maybe even us needing to get more in touch with our conscience, which is I'm going to define as that little voice inside of us that says, hey, man, you can be doing better. Hey, man, you don't have to feel like shit like every morning. Maybe that even that little feeling of guilt when we eat something that we shouldn't, you know, listening to that voice, we have this inner guide that's essentially directing us in the path that is best for us. So. We can start listening to that more. Maybe if you're listening to this podcast, this could be that wake up moment before a heart attack happens. You know, it, the beautiful thing about life at the flip side, as much as we see so many people suffering, being stuck, feeling unmotivated, 
the beautiful thing is truly, if this life experience is a series of now moments, we can change and reinvent ourselves at any moment. So there's also infinite power in the fact that we can commit to being radically different every moment. Is it going to be easy? Heck no. But like understand that from the beginning. Um, and I also think another thing for guys is, is a lot of, and I can personally relate this to my personality type, but a lot of us just need to kind of get back in touch with that warrior mentality that a lot of us had when we were um, earlier in our careers or when we were playing sports. But like we can bring that fire back into our lives. And I think there's very few things that make you feel more motivated and more alive and really just add zest to your entire life and your being as a man as like self-improvement in the physical domain, getting your shit back in order. And sometimes it, 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 it takes yourself looking in the mirror and just being very real, being like, I'm fat. I hate how I look and feel. I've postponed this for so long. Today's the day I can commit. Why is January 1st so powerful? Because it's an artificial calendar fresh start. And I think there's a lot of beauty in that. You know, we have an opportunity every January cycle where you can kind of get on the wagon. And, and some people succeed, a lot of people don't. But like any day could be your January 1st. And I hope it doesn't take to the heart attack. But to directly answer your question, yeah, a lot of guys, unfortunately, wait until they're hit in the head to have a wake up call. But it is available for us in all moments. I do believe that. And, and we do see a lot of guys who, who you know, even are on our program and they, they join because they saw a buddy or a friend be like, hey, what'd you do? How'd you lose the weight? And they get started on that. So there's so many things we can we can do to find that early motivation. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you started your journey here because of a very strong why, your father, same for me. What would you tell a guy listening to this right now that, you know, isn't in as much pain, you know, so much pain where he has to make a change. And like you said, he, he's coasting along. He's, you know, wow, man, I have 50 pounds to lose. It's such a pain in the ass. I have to buy new clothes. I have to join a gym and my wife has to cook new food, right? How do you talk to that guy about sitting down in a quiet space or doing whatever he has to do to think about, literally think about how is my life going to turn out if I continue on this path? Why do I really want to do this? Because I've run, I've run survey after survey after survey asking guys, you know, what's your, what's your number one reason for wanting to be fit? And most of it's, you know, right surface stuff, you know, things that, you know, you just, I want to be a better dad. I want to be a better, but oftentimes that's not the real case. It's something much, much deeper. How do you have those conversations, you know, with the masses to get them really thinking? Sit down, take 20 minutes to yourself, which you never do, in a quiet spot, which you never do, turn your phone off, and then think, you know, why do I want to feel better? Why do I want to lose weight? Why do I want to be fit? Right? How do you, how do you handle that? Well, I'd say first off, if someone is listening to this conversation, like the, the signs are already there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're listening to like a Fit Dad Nation podcast. I mean, it's not a mistake that you're hearing this right now. There's obviously, if you're unhealthy and you know you are, like this is the moment. We'll just say that flat out because mm -hmm. you're already showing a, a, intense interest. The second thing I'd say is, is I think that a lot of guys are okay with being overweight. You know, they have mm -hmm. the belly, but they've had it for 20 years. Wife doesn't care that much. Yeah, I'd like to look better, but it's not a big deal. But maybe um, doing more of this future pacing, like when you see your kids tonight, like really take a look at them and know that one day, like they're going to be in your shoes and the stuff that they're doing today, they're learning from you. And if you want to see your grandkids, you know, you may or may not have that opportunity. So that could be an angle, like exploring things that are greater than yourself, because a lot of us are willing to, to cheat on the diet and, and let ourselves down. But maybe there's someone greater than yourself. There's another opportunity. And I guess we're, we're really throwing darts in the dark here. Like everyone has their own deeper motivation and reason. Um, and I'll say this, I, I think that most of us are born with good enough health, you know, outside of some people who are born, unfortunately, with debilitating diseases. You know, a lot of us do have a moment when we were at least as kids, healthy and energetic. And if that is our default state where we have bodies that are, are full of energy, purpose, and passion. Um, you know, it is not taking care of that um, is ends up being just a huge denial of of what's possible and beautiful about you know being alive in this existence. And this is just this is me kind of 
talking about my own uh, personal philosophies. I don't know if it's going to jive with any guy. I guess, I guess, Steve, honestly, I don't know the answer. You mm-hmm. know, from helping these guys, I don't know. The guys that find us, they ultimately watch a video and they feel like uh, they do have some level of, of, of motivation enough that something clicked that they can take the time. But if a guy can't take 20 minutes to sit down, it's not important enough for him right now. And maybe that is the type of guy that has to wait until that first catastrophic mm-hmm. thing. Um, and I think there are guys that need that. <laughs> Some guys are hard, more hard headed than others. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are also guys that are, are a little more flexible and fluid and can take the signs and can read the subtle things um, and can self start a little bit better. You know, we're all so different um, that I don't think there's necessarily one way to do it. Um, but if you're listening to this, man, and you know it's time for change. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. time for change. <laughs> yeah, you know, and maybe I'm I'm overthinking it or being overly dramatic, um, thinking that everyone has to have that moment. But um, no, you're right. I mean, the points you make are valid. So you know, one thing that that I teach is, you know, if you if you're not willing to or you're not taking care of yourself first, you can't be the best father, the best husband, the best employee you're capable of being. And so I've gotten a lot of feedback about that and. You know, it's kind of split. Some guys say absolutely, and some guys say, well, that's selfish. You know, my wife's home with the kids all day. I come home from work. I can't just go take care of myself. Like, I'm going to take the kids. She's going to take some time. You know, and, and then, you know, I lived this way. I was married for eight and a half years, and it was not a great marriage at any point. And I became a martyr. I lived for them. I literally stopped taking care of myself completely. Like, and I never got overweight per se, because I'm just not a big guy, but I, I was way out of shape. I had the dad bod, all that stuff. You know, and I became the martyr, you know, and, uh, you know, I can imagine you see that the same thing, right? Like we feel selfish for wanting to take care of ourselves or making a change when maybe your wife's not fit or doesn't really care about it. She doesn't care that you're overweight, but you decide that, hey, I want to be fit. I want to feel better. I want to look good in these size 32 or 34 jeans. That's, you know, I've, that's just such a big issue for me, um, creating, creating something that allows guy to feel like they can make themselves it's okay to make themselves a priority because it is right i mean if you're if you're a mess how can you show up for your kids the best way you have no energy i lived that way i had no energy for my kids after my divorce because i was eating mcdonald's literally seven days a week drinking two or three Red Bulls a day six pack of dr pepper abusing my body right i had nothing left for my kids and then when i made that shift i became so much more engaged so much better of a father and then you know i ended up finding a woman and we're, we've been together ever since and like my whole life has changed since that moment and so you know i'd love to hear your thoughts on how are we okay with making ourselves a priority you know what, yeah. what you know what i mean yeah well it, it, not that all roads lead to this reflection process mm-hmm. but a lot of them certainly do and i think that when you do kind of start to see how your health is this connection point between all these domains of areas of your life, your family, your finances, your happiness, uh, your your lasting power, ability to be here 20 years, like then it becomes a must, not something that you, you have to pencil in time for, number one. Number two, I'd like to also address the myth that time ends up being the issue that a lot of guys are worried about because it's like I feel selfish if I'm not spending this amount of time doing things for my family, watching the kids, doing X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And the good news is that in the process of getting healthy, exercise is important, but my personal philosophy is it certainly takes a back seat to proper nutrition and good good quality sleep and hydration. So Mm -hmm. like those things are even more foundational. What I mean by that is that it's absolutely great to exercise and move your body as much as you can. That being said, we have guys in our program who literally exercise 90 minutes per week, like three 30-minute sessions mm-hmm. throughout the week. You know, any guy, even the busiest guy, I'm sure Elon Musk even has time to do 90 minutes of exercise in his week. Whether that's, you know, on the weekends or whether it's uh, waking up a little bit earlier on one day, like the time excuse starts to crumble when you when you know what you and I know, which is that these short effective workouts a couple times per week, coupled with good nutrition um, and some quality hydration and getting to bed at a reasonable time is enough to really start moving the needle on getting healthy. It doesn't have to be this insane thing. And I think we have this rigid thinking when it comes around things like exercise where it's like all or nothing. Like I'm, you know, obviously a guy who's not doing any exercise who feels busy f- would feel stressed out about the idea of spending an hour a day in the gym, you know, five, six days a week doesn't have time for that. Yeah, maybe that's true, man. But what, but certainly having three 30 minute workouts, even two on your first week and start to build any bit of momentum is better. It is 
two workouts per week of, of 20 to 30 minutes is a hundred percent better than zero. You know, mm-hmm. it, yeah. so it, it's, it's like the time excuse. If we feel guilty about where we're allocating our time, you're going to eat anyways. We can make shifts to making sure your food is healthier and maybe even more time efficient to create. And if you want to love your family, I mean, it'd be a probably a good thing to serve your kids some healthier foods, you know, helps them thrive and grow. Um, and pretty much everything that you're seeing in terms of them as constituted biological matter is a byproduct of what you're feeding them. So that's that's something to think about as well. Yeah. One and then two and then two. The thing is, uh, yeah. Also, like this stuff can be time efficient, and it doesn't have to be overly complicated. And it could be just be subtle shifts to the things that you're doing um, that compounded over the course of a year could be the difference of whether you gain or lose fifty pounds this year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, yeah, real quick on the point of you know, kind of setting a role model for your kids as far as eating. I mean, you know as well as I do that a lot of families just will stop at McDonald's, they'll, you know, chicken nuggets in the microwave, whatever. It's very common. You know, I have two daughters, my oldest is 14 and she never, she never really cared about sports or, you know, she had a, uh, you know, a sweet tooth. She, you know, we fed her a lot of junk as a baby because she was like on the failure to thrive scale. And the doctor said, give her ice cream, give her hot dogs. And then she developed this taste for processed junk. And we ended up just staying with it for years. And, and so, um, over the last even three years, you know, myself and, and the woman um, that I live with here, um, you know, we, we've, we live a very healthy lifestyle. We eat well. And I've never pushed anything on her, but I just started taking her to the gym with me. I took, take her outside to play sports. And just now she just got into high school and she just in the last like six months, eight months, she's become like a self-sufficient, like she's, she's cooking her own meals, like healthy meals. It's she's amazing. looking up recipes. She's going to the gym at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning at school to exercise on her own. Like, hmm. And it's just, I've never beat her down about any of this stuff. It's She's just learned from being around us that this is how you live healthy and you know, they seem very happy and we've got you know, tons of energy. And, and so that's, you know, that is so important to me. And I mean, it just makes a huge, huge difference. So guys, you know, hearing this right now, you know they're watching, they're listening. You know if the, if you're bringing home pizza every night, they they're not stupid. They know and they learn that stuff. But something that you said is extremely important is you know you talked about the basics. You know and I just I beat the basics down right: sleep, hydration, recovery, movement, stress management. Right? Those things are boring. They're they're not sexy at all. But that's you know that's part of the problem is you know sexy sells which we know, right? So that's why there's a new diet book claiming some crazy thing every other day, right? But at the, at the very core of it all, right? Yeah, get your sleep. Take care of what you're putting into your body, right? Drink a lot of water. Get rid of all the junk that you know is hurting your body. Reduce your stress. Find an outlet for it, right? Take care of your body. Walk a lot. Move more. Stretch, I mean, right? Like no one's like, wow, that's such amazing information, but <laughs> it's what works. That's what it's, works. It's, I mean, that's, it is what works. That's it. Right. It's, and it's hard and you've done a very nice job of packaging it to make it sound appealing. And I think that's part of the problem is it's, it is hard to make that stuff sound enticing because like, Oh really? I already know that I need to get sleep. You know, it's like, but this guy over here is doing this and this sounds amazingly fun. And but, well, you know, that'd be good for a short time, but let's always come back to the basics, you know? And that's what we're up against. You know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to stretch. We don't want to warm up before we work out. Like, we don't want to drink a ton of water because we're pissing every 15 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. We want to do what we want to do. We want to we want to go to the gym. We want to lift chest and shoulders. You know, we want to do the bro muscles and the show muscles. Like, we have egos. We want to, you know, we don't want to stretch. It's too slow, you know? And so, the importance of what we're doing, you know, can't be, uh, you know, uh, overstated, you know, because yeah. no guys, let's, let's think longer term, right? That's, that's what this is about. Totally. And here's, I think this is why also having a plan and having a system as we kind of talked about, like not doing this your own is essential because if the basics are what matter hint, they actually are, we need to, we need to have a system that helps us execute on the basics that does not rely on our willpower. So important. And I mm-hmm. think a lot of us make the mistake of relying on willpower. It is a it is a is a finite and faulty resource. What people who are successful with their health rely on are systems. Systems that remove thinking, systems that make your ability to have those healthy choices to get into the gym easier. So a couple basic things is like why is something like 
spending two hours over the weekend to meal prep some stuff one of the best things you can do for your health? Well, if you're eating, let's say, three meals a day, seven meals a week, that's 21 decision points that you need to make. Then you think you're going to nail 21 out of 21 healthy decisions when you're stressed, when you're busy, when you didn't prepare, when you only have five minutes to make a meal because you had a meeting coming up? Absolutely not. Yep. Like that's failure guaranteed for pretty much everyone. But if you pave the path ahead of time, if you found the healthy foods that you already love and the categories of proteins, healthy carbs, veggies, healthy fats, you prepared those things in bulk and at least they're in your fridge, you know, so you can piece together a meal very quickly. You've set yourself up for success on the nutrition. If you only do that and you standardize your breakfast, your first meal of the day, you make it standardized where you either have a a healthy shake or some kind of egg recipe or whatever you do, but you know it's a healthy meal and you make that thing routine, you've already nailed, let's say one third of your meals for the day is already healthy. The rest of them you have pre-prepared foods and you don't have to think about what healthy food you're gonna have because you've already made the decision ahead of time, makes your life easier. With your exercise, what if you started treating those things as meetings? And week ahead, you scheduled your two to three meetings. They're blocked out. You know when you're doing them. It's not like a, when am I going to exercise per week? It's, this is when I'm exercising this week. And if they get missed, which a meeting you should show up for, but if they do, they get rescheduled and you get it in per week. And at the end of the week, you do a little roundup. You're like, did I hit my three exercise meetings? Check. How did I do on my meal prep and healthy eating? Relatively speaking, check. And then also you build in the space for the enjoyment of this stuff. But what about the beer and pizza, Anthony? What about the hamburger? Well, you schedule in a free meal once per week where you know it's going to be time where you're out with your spouse or your family Friday or Saturday night. You know, it's a time that you'd normally have a little more relaxed meal and you have that. So it's not like you're depriving yourself either. But like if, if any of those things has one common theme, it's that we need to be proactive with our health and, and develop these simple systems. And then you, you layer that system approach on top of a strong why where you know why this stuff's essential. It's going to make it a lot more likely that you follow through. You're going to start to succeed, and one day you may become like your daughter, Steve, where you have this intrinsic motivation to get up and kick ass just because feeling good feels good, and you wouldn't want to do anything else. That's 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 an approach in a nutshell that I think is very powerful. Oh, it definitely is, and you said something that I agree with 100%, meaning willpower is a finite resource, and I think a lot of popular diets – um, you know, call call it the keto, whatever, <clears throat> requires, I mean, that's what it thrives, right? You need willpower and discipline, like a strong discipline to stick with something like that. And and which is why, you know, I mean, keto gets a bad rap too. Uh, I mean, it can be effective, sure, for certain populations. But I think a lot of people think that it's this miracle cure, um, but it's extremely difficult to stick to for most people that are used to eating a shitload of carbs, which is most of this country, right? And now all of a sudden they can eat hardly any. And yeah, you can willpower it out, right? You can grind it out for a week, two weeks, even a month, but you're miserable, right? You feel lousy. And yeah, at some point it's just too much. You you can't say no anymore, right? You have two other things, too many other things pulling at you, and you give in, you go back to eating like you did, and boom, right? Weight regain, keto didn't work, I'm destined to be fat forever, and the, the, yeah, the struggle continues. Totally. I mean, that's that's the story for sure. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's something to note for those guys listening. Just remember that, like, trying to willpower your way to success and long-term results is a terrible plan, and you need a, like like you said, system in place. Yeah, 100%. Now, one more thing, just because I think keto is something worth commenting on, because we've mm-hmm. been talking more principles instead of more of, like, the in-the-weed stuff, mm-hmm. is, like, for most people, it is a good idea to lower their, your carbohydrate intake. And mm-hmm. obviously, your your processed carbohydrate intake and absolutely your processed sugar intake. Like that's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Um, And that helps people reestablish insulin sensitivity. It helps you break the addiction cycle with some of these foods. It keeps your energy more stable because you're not having blood sugar spikes. All of that is good. And insofar as a lot of people feel good in keto, it's because they're cleaning a lot of that stuff up. That being said, any diet that restricts one of the three main macronutrients, protein, carbs, or fats, is creating restriction from day one that is setting up a battle that you're gonna have to face for a long, long time. Yes, it's not a good idea to to drink soda um, and eat like potato chips, not great, right? Mm -hmm. But things like organic blueberries that would not fly in a keto plan have a lot of health benefits. So I I think it's, this is why we personally at the Fit Father Project 
like take a moderate approach where we, we allow guys to have carbs and proteins mm -hmm. and fats, eat a wide variety of foods. Um, and I'm not against it. If someone wants to make the plan more keto and do that, that's fine. But you can lose. We have guys who've literally lost close to 200 pounds eating bread every single day. And this is a high quality bread, you know, yeah. like Ezekiel bread or something there. But like, it's not like this. Uh, yeah, the keto thing, it has benefits in certain situations, but you don't have to be that extreme unless you really want to. But just understand the dangers of, of being overly restrictive from the outset. Yeah, uh, well said. And, and I was, actually wasn't going to get into the specifics of certain diets, but since we're here, let me ask you about the carnivore. That That's become all the rage, and I'm hearing a lot of things about it. And, um, you know, there's a, there's um, a guy on Instagram that uh, I've been communicating with, and I'm trying to get him on the show. His name is Dr. Sean Baker. He's a huge proponent of the carnivore diet. He, I think he may even be responsible for kind of starting this whole wave of interest. Um, and there's some big names doing it. They swear by it, the health benefits and you know, for every person that says the carnivore is the way to go, someone says vegan is the way to go, right? The opposite. And so I'm curious to hear just your thoughts on a 100% meat diet. I mean, to me, that's not, not, I mean, I love meat, but that sounds disgusting. Like, I want to eat fruits and vegetables. Like, I just, I want to do that. It is, sounds terrible. But, you know, what are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. You know, we can keep this, you know, short because I'm sure I'll keep it on the, the I'll keep it on the briefer side and I could go deep on this. But mm -hmm. yeah. my thoughts are, a lot of people feel good when starting carnivore diets because these are a carnivore diet in its very nature is, is essentially an elimination diet. Mm -hmm. You're eliminating what you can't eat on a carnivore diet is all the crap, the carbs, the processed sugars, all the stuff, right? You're just having meat, which is containing pretty much protein and fat, which is pretty much an extreme keto diet, although yeah. higher in the protein than a regular keto diet would be. Um, and so a lot of people feel better. And also people do have immune system reactions to certain plant-based foods. Like there are foods that cause people, like a lot of people know that when they eat wheat um, and wheat containing gluten proteins, among other things, wheat germ, um, agglutinin as well, like people have immune reactions. They feel lethargic, they feel achy. So you're getting rid of all that. It's an elimination diet and insofar as it's that, it's very helpful. Also, when the body does get into that state of ketosis, it does keep blood sugar levels stable and people, people feel good. Now, um, a couple things to think about when with carnivore diets. One, we do know that cooking animal proteins at high heat, like charring and the char on the steak, um, does create compounds that do promote cancer. Um, they're called polyaromatic hydrocarbons or heterocyclic amines, complicated stuff, basically charred, twisted, denatured amino acids can promote cancer. Also, when you do eat high on the food chain, you know, which a lot of us do as omnivores, you know, you have to worry about what you ate, ate. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between eating a corn-fed steak and a high-quality grass-fed steak. A temperature that you cooked it at, notwithstanding, there's a big difference between eating farmed fish that's full of mercury and mycoplastics besides you know, something that may be like a wild-caught salmon. So you also need to be a little more concerned about the food quality. And another thing I would say on the carnivore is um, you know, there is so much benefit to having certain types of fiber in your diet for your probiotics and your digestive health and making sure that stuff's moving through your GI tract. Like with the carnivore diet, um, you're having stuff that's not moving through the GI tract in the presence of fiber. Um, and personally, I don't think that's a, that's a great thing to have. And I also do think that um, there are so many beautiful vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals um, in the plant kingdom, like things like those blueberries that you couldn't have on a carnivore diet that would be additive and supported, supportive for a more healthy diet than if you restricted those things artificially. Do I think people can live long term on carnivore diets and survive? Absolutely. I think there's been people who have been doing it for years. Um, and believe it or not, you can get your vitamin C. And I think Sean Baker can cover that a lot more. There's some interesting physiology of what, what happens when you don't do carbohydrate metabolism. You don't need as much of some other things. But for me, it's just like, man, we're just getting into another phase of super restrictive stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's, and, it, and, and I do, I do, I will put my stake on this. If it ends up being an excuse for people to eat a lot of low quality, um, high heat cooked, um, you know, bacon and mm -hmm. certain kinds of fatty steaks, 
it's not going to be as good for your health over the long term as if you didn't have that. So I think that it, a, a healthy diet ends up being eating a whole unprocessed foods. It ends up looking something like paleo, which I think has it better. The, the paleo mm-hmm. type of diet it eliminates a lot of these immune reactive vegetables and grains. Um, you certainly are allowed to have your meats if you want them and your fishes, but you're also having you know fruits and vegetables and you have a wide variety of, of different things. Our bodies thrive on diversity of foods of fibers, of different kinds of things. And anytime we introduce like restriction to the to the highest degree, I believe it's to our detriment outside of people who have immune autoimmune conditions who they only feel good when they have meat. So that's that's my that's my kind of two, three minute take on it. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. And we may have to set up another show at some point to actually get into some of this stuff, especially some of these Netflix documentaries that are making their rounds and I'm getting a lot of emails. I'm sure you are too. Oh, I just saw the game changers and that's it. I'm done with me forever. I'm like, whoa, 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 let's back it up. But yeah. you know, we'll save that for another time. Um, totally. I'd love I, to. Yeah. yeah. Cause I want to, I want to talk about one of the thing that is, we didn't touch on it much at all and it's vitally important to our success and that's the tribe aspect, yeah. right? Everything that I do now in, in the group is all in groups, right? I, you know, I've spent a lot of many years doing one-on-one stuff, and it's it's great. But when you get a group of like-minded men together, right, with the same missions, and they start supporting each other and sharing wins and losses, and um, you know, kind of picking each other's brains, it becomes so much better, so much better. And so, um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you've seen in your business and within your groups of how that has helped your clients and your members i think the groups truly are if i had to throw a it's a random number but attribute that's not random but i'd, I'd attribute at least 50 percent of our results to the fact that guys are in groups going through a shared experience it is one of the most powerful things possible and it's not just the fact that you could post up your challenges and get support or post up your wins and get uh and, and get the celebration of your brothers alongside of you it's the fact that you really get to see that as you're going down your path of getting healthier, you get to observe other guys sharing their stuff, going down their path, and it makes it all seem okay. Like you understand that you're not the only one struggling with these issues. You're not the only one who feels like you're, you fall down at times. You're not the only one who sets PRs and kicks ass. Um, and celebrating, we're, we're social creatures by nature. So celebrating the wins and successes of, of those who we feel are like-minded, uh, it, it's everything. And that's why the most successful organizations, um, business organizations, have the best culture. You look at the kind of brotherhood and fellowship that guys that come out of the Marines have. You know, that's not by accident. You, you put them through some tough stuff um, with a shared sense of brotherhood, camaraderie, core values, um, and everyone getting after the same thing. It ignites something in men. And I, and I think it's it's probably very tribal and very, very evolutionary to where we came from. You know, hunting parties, small communities, like we want to be involved with one another in a positive way where everyone's making each other better. I love the quote from the Bible that says, um, as iron sharpens iron, so too does one man sharpen another. Like it is so true. And that's why you got to get around like-minded people. And guess what? Oftentimes that's not your family because oftentimes as you're trying to make a change, your family is doing the stuff that the old you was doing because we end up being a byproduct of our environment. So you got to kind of shake that up, find a community. And as much as social media has a lot of BS to it these days and a lot of stuff that's not good, what is good about it is community and groups. Um, We have guys who make Facebooks just so they can get into our brotherhood groups and chat with the other guys and, and, and be along the program journey. Um, I, it's, it's, it's one of the things that moving forward, we're going to double and triple down on just like you, because it makes it a more rewarding experience for everyone involved. Yeah, for sure. And I, I had uh, Larry Hagner on my show a while back and he runs a very successful men's group called the dad edge Alliance. And he spoke about the lone wolf mentality and like, you know, yeah. the fact that a lot of us feel the need that we need to do this alone. And you know, that doesn't work, you know, and, and it's such a hard thing to break out of. I mean, I find myself withdrawing from my own groups, you know, feeling like I'm on my own here. I've got to handle my shit on my, my, my own. And you probably seen it plenty of times. I've seen guys, they'll pay me good money and then they disappear, you know, because you know, for whatever reason, like they, they, maybe they're sucked back into that mentality of, oh, and I don't have anything to share. I'm embarrassed. My results aren't like the other guys, whatever it is. 
and it, that kicks in. And so, you know, I always say, guys, listen, the more engaged you can become, put yourself out there, you know, just post something because someone is going to read it, whether they comment it or like it or whatever, they're going to read it and that's going to inspire them. I see it all the time, right? Someone just posts a little, hey guys, I'm really struggling with X today, having a horrible day, you know, thanks for keeping me honest. That That's going to resonate with somebody else. And so I say, it's, just put it out it there, is. guys. Put it out it's there. Cath- it's cathartic too. I mean, if we bottle these things up, that's where we start to get like the real injuries, like emotions, disappointments, setbacks, triumphs, like these are emotions that are come along with any kind of health journey. But those emotions are meant to like pass through us, not to be bottled up and carried on. Um, insofar as we find ourselves overweight with actual poundage, 50 plus pounds, that comes along with 50 plus pounds of guilt, um, of frustration, of, you know, lack of trust in our own word. Some of these deeper level things that, you know, as you're, when you commit to a new path, allowing yourself to be more of a clean filter to let stuff flow through. And the whole lone wolf thing, I identify with that so much. That was me for literally probably 15 years. But then you realize at a certain point is that's just, uh, that's just the unhealthy side of ego. Um, and it's also kind of scared um, mm-hmm. of vulnerability and connection. Um, and in a way, in, in that light, it's a little bit of like weakness of not being able to allow yourself to be seen by other guys, to see other guys. Um, and it's not like this is a kumbaya, we're all holding hands. Like this is still like tough groups where like these are, these are real men and we get after some things. But the vulnerability and – it's just that's that in itself is is healing and helps you be more successful too. Absolutely, you know, and I'd love to hear you know a few of your experiences from from guys in your groups and programs, some that have succeeded and done really well, and then versus those who have not. Like, what was the the overriding difference? You know, was it they're overwhelmed? Was it a lack of engagement? Did they feel like they didn't fit in? You know, was it you know what was uh, or what are a few things that you've noticed between guys that come in, kick ass, make amazing progress. And guys that come in, start strong, and then just disappear. I think with these fitness journeys, there is the the thought that progress is linear. And it couldn't be further from the truth. The guys that are still kicking ass two, three years later um, are the guys that had, like, had a lot of success and momentum. And then something happened because life happens, whether it's – an injury, maybe they, they hurt their shoulder working out or something happened with their kids. And, and the, like there's intense tragedies that we've seen with guys in the group that, you know, stuff that is, is absolutely crazy goes beyond what I've personally experienced. The guys who have the ability to recommit and get back on the horse, that ability to kind of like self start again, um, is probably one of the best skills. And I can reflect in my own fitness journey too. Like there are periods when I'm absolutely crushing it. There are periods that are more cruise control. There are periods that are backsliding and your ability to course correct, to keep like guardrails up a little closer and make sure those backslides are small and to recommit and move forward are what make the successful guys most successful. And I also find the guys in our groups who do post the most, who are the most active tend to get better results. Without a doubt. I mean, you definitely find guys who, you know, we'll call like lurkers who come out of the woodwork. You don't hear from them at all since they join. They're like, hey, guys, down 75 pounds. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> yep. cool. You, you've been busy. Yep. Um, but by and large, the guys that are, are more active posting and checking in and working the system, like, um, are the guys that are, that are certainly more successful because they're engaging that community aspect. And I'd say also the guys who do make the time to exercise, um, I'd say three to four times per week are more successful than those guys who only do one to two. Um, and that's not to say those one to two guys can't necessarily like lose 50 plus pounds because a lot of them do, but there's something powerful about getting in the habit of moving your body almost on a daily basis. It almost reinforces all this stuff and moving your body does not necessarily mean a workout. It means also like even a 30 minute walk, you know, just, just doing something active every single day. It's as much of a, a mental and spiritual thing as it is a physical thing just in getting your moving your body activates all these all these <laughs> different pathways and stuff that makes you feel good so those are those are some variables i definitely say engagement the guys who seem like they they commit to doing something every day and i'd say another thing too is there's a certain point in your journey where you need to make it your own like the guys that follow our programs they maybe go on to our phase two maybe in our phase three programs and at a certain point they're like hey i want to start running a marathon i want to start taking jujitsu classes i want to do a spartan race so 
when that intrinsic motivation kicks in and then hobbies get tied to this stuff, like I want to go start playing rec basketball. I used to do that in college. That was really great. That's where fitness starts to uh, transform into something greater than just the workouts and the systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So one more question for you. Guy listening to this show right now hasn't done anything in 15 years struggling just to get motivated to start, you know, getting back into anything. What would you tell him? the three best habits for him to start working on are? I'd say a 30-minute walk or 5,000 steps per day. Just start tracking your steps and move your body more. I wouldn't even say formal workouts are important, but like you got to start moving your body. Um, you know, And I'd say the second thing is you got to get on a simple nutrition system. So if you, got, if you have something you know, on your site, like some kind of simple meal plan or some guide on meal prep or go on YouTube or check out some of our stuff, like you got to get some kind of nutrition system because I think what's going to be most motivating is seeing that that first week you lost three pounds. And it's very, very possible by just cleaning up your nutrition and, and, and walking, getting your body moving every day. And I'd say if you had to only pick one of those things, I'd be most apt to say get on a simple nutrition plan. Even if it's like intermittent fasting, you know, mm -hmm. drinking coffee or green tea until 11, having a healthy meal that's pre-planned at around 11, snack at three, dinner at six. If you did that for seven days and then you see, wow, I'm down three, four pounds. That's, that's, that's where you got to start creating those early wins because the, what is motivating, we have our guys weigh themselves almost every single day. And it's not that the scale is expected to drop every single day, but it creates a pattern of a feedback loop. If weight is the goal, what, what gets tracked and measured gets improved. That's something that we believe. Mm -hmm. um, and also, if, if weight is the goal and, you know, you found out that you've been doing really well, your last week you lost three pounds, this week you lost three pounds, then on Friday you had two beers, a bunch of burgers, and some sushi, and then you wake up the next day, you're four pounds higher. That's great feedback loop about what kind of things affect your body, and it gives you um, a little kick in the butt to get back on the horse. So <laughs> you asked me for one thing. I gave you like two and a half things, but I'd say it's probably the nutrition and the, and the daily walking. And uh, I think you'd probably would say that sleep is up there as well. Yeah, totally. All, often I think overlooked. This, it, it is, man. It's it's definitely a foundation for us. I, I think that even if you had to give one thing for a week, I'd say I'd rather I'd rather have a guy clean up his nutrition and still sleep, you know, six hours for that first week than sleep nine hours and still eat McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Only because I think in that first week they're going to lose uh, more weight and start to create more of those early wins by cleaning up the nutrition. But over the long haul. If your sleep's not on point, your recovery from exercise is going to be terrible. Your stress levels are going to be higher. Uh, your body won't process carbs as well. So that's something that needs to be nailed too. Yeah. And there's something that um, Martin Rooney told me that kind of stuck with me. He, we had him on the show a while back and he said, a man might be able to live twice as long if he didn't spend the first half of his life building ha bad habits that shorten the second. Yeah. Which is true. I mean, it, it all comes down to habits. And again, we could we could talk about that for an hour too, but um Anyway, this has been awesome, and I, I do actually would love to have you back on the show to talk more about like the diet, nutrition piece, fasting, yeah. um, and pick your brain because you know you're an expert in that field, and you know you have a great deal of knowledge. So, yeah, if you're open to that, I would love to have you back on. Um, yeah, after Sean Baker, I'd love to hear his his yeah. thing, and then we'll talk some more about carnivore and plant based because you know I've been experimenting with a lot of this kind of stuff, and I definitely have thoughts on this, so I'd love to. For sure, for sure, and so uh, I'll link to um, where you want me to link to your, you know, your your um, website, YouTube whatever. And, YouTube and website would be great. I'd love for people to start checking out some YouTube videos and watching some stuff because, like, a lot, a lot of the stuff we talked about, we have some good free stuff they can check out, and like, you can watch a YouTube video and get started on a free meal plan this week and start kicking ass. So, yeah, that'd be awesome. Sure, man. So it's fitfatherproject.com, and then just just um, that's your your uh, YouTube uh, address as well. Yeah, it's YouTube okay. slash Fit Father Project or just Google, YouTube, Google search Fit Father Project. Awesome, man. This has been great. Um, great conversation. And uh, I think we helped a lot of guys. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad. <laughs>